Sky rings like a. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Hey, everyone. You are tuned in to Talk the Talk with LZs. I am your host, Miss Londa, co host Charm. Also joining us, our other co host is Miss Desiree. We have a special guest here today. He's from the Black Fathers Nation, uh, Sylvester. Welcome to the show. And also, we have Slim joining us today. I would like to welcome everybody to the show. Our topic today is co parenting 101. I'm going to um, give the floor to you, Sylvester. How are you guys doing today? Good. So right off the bat, um, my name is Sylvester. Uh, my organization is Black Father Nation. Um, I'll get to that a little later why I started that, but the subject is co-parenting 101. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big subject because um, when you have kids and you and it don't go the right way and you break off and co-parenting hits real hard because sometimes it's not given. Sometimes you have to fight for it. Um, you gotta be patient. So it's like, it's different scenarios for each and every one of us. Like sometimes if you're not able to have a kid, then there's a, a problem with the, with the parenting or if you're not able to talk to the kid. So there's millions of scenarios of um, co-parenting. It just, you have to be patient and see what works for you. I mean, if we want to, we can like open it up and see if there's any questions like that I could answer for training, co-parenting, I mean, it's a huge subject. <laughs> it is a huge subject. And um, a lot of people think when they when you when you speak on co parenting, a lot of people automatically assume uh, there be fathers. Well, let's mm -hmm. talk about the fathers that are, are actually out here trying to be there for their kids and then are and are not given a chance. Yeah, that's a big one, too. I mean, sometimes it could be envy or jealousy or he cheated on me or he left me. I don't want him to see his kid. It's, it's so much. I mean, like, I mean, even if the parent doesn't want you, want the kid around the boyfriend or the girlfriend, they can, you know, easily say no, no, custody, you know, no co-parenting. So it just, it's so much like, we have to almost, it's like for the kid, like, you know, I mean, I know I'm in a situation where my mom is like the the go-to person in, in between. So if it if we can't, you know, meet and dish off the kid, then okay, meet my mom and then she can give the kid and then, you know, so but sometimes the mom doesn't work and sometimes family doesn't work and you gotta get downtown involved or, you know, the custody or, you know, those folks involved. But I have a question for you. Do you, okay, so with that being said, and I, I was listening really well, and you were pretty much saying like when it doesn't work, you know, with the mother. So basically at that point, you guys are separated, right? I took that right. correct? Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, you know, clearly there is a reason, you know, and it could be, it can be the mom. Sometimes it's the father, you know, the reason, right? And so correct. you put a third party in. Most times, you know, we like to use family, right? So we can keep the county and all those other people out of our business. But sometimes that's what it resorts down to. Now, my question to you is, um, you want to be a father. How does that affect you? Uh, it affects you a lot because, like you said, in a situation, there's so many fathers wanting to be a father. Mm -hmm. and not being able to have that time with the child because um, the mom doesn't want him to, or, you know, there's no, there's no relationship between them as a adult level for them to want that relationship for the child. I mean, so 
again, like, you know, it's, you know. It can be difficult. Totally it's super understand. Super difficult. You know, and then, like, I can say, for instance, I got family, I got brothers locked up, and some of their, you know, child's mother, like, just cut off the, cut off the, you know, the relationship at all, you know, so there's no, there's no calling, there's no, you know, anything. And sometimes in that situation, you know, there are different, there are different reasons why it doesn't work. And there are reasons why it should work. I mean, it just, all different scenarios. I mean, you know, and then the father's out there that like my brother, for instance, he has a situation <laughs> and, you know, he wants to be the dad, but then he's not, you know what I mean? So, and then what do you do? Do you stop taking care of the kid or do you, you know, continue to be there as a father and then work it out or what do you do? So, you know, we have a big family and we don't, we don't forget about any, any, any kid, any kid that came in the door, we, we should know where they are and and how good they're doing. You know, Absolutely. we don't turn no kid no kid away and you know it's unfortunate that sometimes you hold them back from their mom or their dad because maybe he's not in a situation that he can take the kid. Maybe he he's homeless. Maybe he doesn't have a roof. Maybe he doesn't have a job. Maybe he's you know maybe he has a habit, you know, so there's so many situations where, you know, the co-parent is bad, you know, maybe they're not on the same level as parenting again, you know, and these kids grow up. I mean, zero to 10, that's fast. That's fast. So, you know, to see daddy or to see mommy both in the picture, even separated, that's one thing, but to not see one of them, you know, for five, 10 years and then see daddy or see mommy, it's almost like, you know, you got to rekindle that relationship because it's been so long, you know. And and I can kind of, and anybody else can jump in at any time, and I can kind of speak to that, you know, um, for, for the loved ones that's like um, incarcerated, right? And we're speaking on co-parenting. So like you said, there's many different situations, right? So when one parent is taken from the child, it don't even necessarily got to be the home, you know, but taken from the child. And then you have the mother that now that she's moved on, you know, and she has someone new, she allows that relationship to dictate what the relationship should be with the father and his child. And I'll be the first to say that I think that that's wrong. And again, as you know, Miss Londa can agree to this. We are very, um, we're not judgmental on our show, right? Everybody, everybody opinion matters. Okay. But I, do, I I think that that's wrong, you know. Um, that shouldn't stop that man from being a father unless and it was a situation where it involved that child and the safety of that child, and that's a whole nother story. But if that's not the scenario, you know, I just don't think that I, that's right, that women should allow their new relationship to dictate the father and the father of that child. I, I just think that that's so unfair. I think and that's not a level of disrespect. I, I think I think I absolutely agree. However, men do that. We we have to not forget that men do that a lot more so than women. From what I from I've only been a mom three years, and three years is I, I've witnessed some things that I didn't think men would do. Um, and it's not that they it's not about the child. It's anger. Sometimes we don't think we're going to lose certain things, and when we lose those things, we get angry and we start acting out of that anger and not necessarily. Uh, thinking about the child in that okay. picture um, because my son's father absolutely adores him absolutely adores him and I think a lot of time, pe times people um, you can be a decent father but still don't know how to be a decent man to a woman and that should not cause any conflict with someone being a father or a father figure because I don't believe in those type of things just because things didn't work out between you know let's say my situation my father my son's father and I I still wanted him to have that relationship but in the beginning it was so rocky it was it's, it was so toxic it was like wait a minute how are we going to do this because every time we're around each other it's like oh it's like the Hulk coming out or something like we need to figure a different route out and I didn't feel initially I didn't feel safe in a sense of 
me saying, hey, let's meet here and let me drop my son. I've always wanted to be a public place because, you know, sometimes you see the tail end of things when things don't go so long's way. You see a you see a person that you've never seen before. It's like, whoa, oh, yes. wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't like this. Yeah. I don't like this. So that's what our situation was. And um and he had this thing where he would, I want to, he would just randomly call, I want to see my son. Like, hold on, wait a minute. I do structure. <laughs> so I believe yeah. every child needs structure. So we need consistency. It can't be two days this week and then three days next month. We can't do that. And, you know, when I was trying to explain that to him and then, you know, asking him to do something financial, that just wasn't the case. So he decided he wanted to go visit, get visitation rights. And that was the best thing that could have happened for my son's father and I. And, you know, the first year, like I said, my son was six months when I left his father. It was still rocky because it was still some, you know, when you move differently, have a person think that you wouldn't, you would move and then you show them something else. You know, it takes a while for that to kind of calm down. Mm -hmm. So initially we were dropping, we were meeting at a precinct to here, get this baby. And I would kind of go walk to your daddy. Like, here you go, get your daddy. Because it was like, wait a minute. It's just, I, I want you to, whatever this is, I want you to get over it because I wasn't trying to hurt you or take your son away. But what I do believe is children need to be in environments that are, that are healthy, that yes. are toxic free, that are loving. Correct. Because I believe children need to be happy at all times. And you can't raise happy children in environments where mom and dad, they're always into it, they're always fighting, True. bickering, screaming. Kids feel those emotions. So I had they to do. think about my son and remove myself out of this situation in order to give my son the life that he deserved. You know, sometimes people don't think about that. So I, oh, after that year, started towards 2019, his father and I are a lot better. We don't use the precinct anymore. We both know where each other stay. So <laughs> it, gets, <laughs> it gets better. It gets you better. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> it, it, uh, it gets better. And then the visitation also guaranteed my, because when no matter what the relationship was with my son's father and I my son needs his father absolutely and I wanted my son to see his father as much as possible so the visitation or I was like okay so they'll give him every other weekend and then you know during the summertime he gets the majority of, my son gets to be with his father but now it's even a little bit better because my son's is in in school so he sees his dad pretty much daily he gets to spend a few hours with his dad pretty much daily and his dad and I when things don't um when our schedules conflict or his work schedule then we can work with each other but it takes time it takes you know, a lot of time it's not, people aren't over things and they'll say, well, I'm not over things. <laughs> oh, I, I don't want this person. I don't want that person. But as soon as this person, that was a our court date, I walked in and my son's father just, it was like the, he was so upset. Like, I was like, what in the world did I do to this man? I did nothing to him, but, you know, <laughs> remove myself out of a situation that was not great for my child. But when you move how, People in their mind, because they probably had you under some spell, they, they think they know how you're going to move. And then mm -hmm. when you switch up on them, you see something like, whoa, is this the person I've been dealing with? What is going on? You know? Now, I'm not going to say I, I'm the type of person, every action, I, what I believe is every action has a reaction. So a lot of times people talk about the reaction because my reactions are something serious when it comes to protecting my kid and making sure that, you know, my child is okay. Um, people rarely think about the action or really rarely ask about the action that caused the reaction. And, you know, and the reaction is what most people like. Oh my God, did you see that? You saw that was, and that's how our first year was as far as parenting apart, uh, in two different homes. Now, one thing I did, I never worried about was who he was dating. I didn't care because I trust that he, because I know he adores his son and loves his child. I trust that he would have anyone around him that he feels safe with so i've never been one of those parents i don't care about what you're doing i encourage his dad to find somebody stable so my son can see the same person every day i encourage that because my son needs stability he needs to see his father loving one woman correctly that's what i feel my so i don't care about you know the relationship thing get it my son needs it all of your children need to see that yeah however a lot of women are very you know i don't want my son around this woman I was waiting it's on you to about, say that. It's not, yeah. about, it's not about that woman. It's not about yeah. that woman. It's not about what, you know, some men are uh, uh, a child's conflict between, you know, the kid's mom and that woman. You know, it's a lot of different scenarios that go on. You don't know why that woman doesn't want to talk to you or be around you because that person, you know, the man that's in the middle could be causing all type of conflict. And mm -hmm. I've witnessed that too in my three years mm -hmm. of being a 